On today's episode of History and Relics, we're featuring a story in history of a Fender electric guitar that was part of a series made during the Fender CBS era between 1979 and 1982. That series was the lead series, and our spotlight is on the Fender Lead 3 from 1981. The Lead 3 was the last in the lead series built by Fender. The series was a less expensive option than its brethren, the Fender Stratocaster and was designed to attract a new audience of players that were coming up in the 80s rock and roll and heavy metal era. So come along for a history lesson on a somewhat seldom seen vintage American made guitar on this edition of History and Relics. Clarence Leonidas Fender, born August 10, 1909, and died March 21, 1991, was an American inventor who founded the Fender Electric Instrument Manufacturing Company. He founded two other musical instrument companies, Music Man in 1975 and GNL Music Instruments in 1979. The guitars, basses, and amplifiers he designed from the 1940s are still widely used today. The Fender Telecaster from 1950 was the first mass-produced solid-body electric guitar. The Fender Stratocaster came along in 1954 and is among the most iconic electric guitars. Leo Fender, who actually never learned to play the instruments, was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1992. His instruments have been played by many other Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees, such as Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, and the late great Stevie Ray Vaughan. Due to a huge uptick in electric guitar sales in the 1960s, brought on by the Beatles, The Who, and Jimi Hendrix, as well as several other rock and roll bands, the Columbia Broadcasting System, or CBS, was most interested in increasing its profits, and in 1965, purchased the Fender Guitar Company from Leo Fender for $13.5 million. The sale included the company's existing stock, the brand name Fender and its existing brands, which included Fender Sales, Fender Electric Instruments, Fender Acoustic Instruments, and Fender Rhodes, as well as several other acquisitions that Leo Fender made over the years. And as one can imagine, this was a huge gain for CBS, as it had its roots firmly planted in only radio and television broadcasting prior to this. The existing stock was sold off by the following year without many changes, However, by 1966, cost-cutting began to take place. CBS was looking at any means to turn a profit, and this is why pre-CBS is such a big deal to guitar and amplifier collectors. But many of the products offered during the CBS years were not all bad. Moving the clock forward to 1979, CBS Fender was looking to attract new guitarists, especially due to the onset of the heavy metal era. Japanese and Korean manufacturers were already making strides in this direction and were offering products that rivaled U.S. brands. And these Asia-produced instruments typically sold for much less than those made in the United States. In that same year, Fender came out with a series of guitars that were based on a Stratocaster, but were sold at a reduced price. In 1979, a Fender Stratocaster cost almost $500. This new series would sell for around $400. This new series of guitars were also designed by Greg Wilson, John Page, and Freddie Tavares, and named the Fender Lead Series by Fender Marketing Director Dennis Handa. The guitars were available in a transparent burgundy or black. Each one had a one-piece maple neck or rosewood fingerboard and had a 25.5-inch scale with black dot position markers, medium frets, and a skunk stripe on the back. However, the ones with a rosewood neck 
had white position markers and did not have the skunk stripe. The bodies of the lead series guitars had horns that were more symmetrical than those on a Stratocaster. As is typical for Fender, the opaque lacquered models were made of three-piece Adler wood, while the transparent lacquered guitars were made of three-piece ash. A widespread illness amongst the early lead models was extensive paintwork damage, which often appeared after just a few months. The reason for this were attempts made by the manufacturer with new types of paint, possibly also the use of poorly seasoned wood. Often, extensive paint cracks would soon appear on the body, which eventually led to a blue-gray discoloration. For this reason, many used lead models are seen today in an unpainted state with a so-called natural finish. These guitars had an adjustable hard tailpiece that bolted to the body. The strings were pulled through the body from the back and fastened with push-in sleeves. A tremolo system was not offered. Besides the hardtail bridge and saddle, other cost-cutting measures included the same routing for the lead 1, 2, and lead 3, and all of the electronics were confined to the pickguard area, including the jack. The plastic pickguard for all the instruments had the backside covered completely with aluminum for grounding purposes. With the lead series, Fender returned to the narrow headstock for the first time since 1965. However, towards the end of the instrument's production, the headstock moved to a more elongated style that was smaller than that of a Telecaster or a Stratocaster. The Lead 1 was equipped with a specially designed Seth Lover split humbucker pickup in the bridge position. The Lead 1 had a three position coil selector switch that enabled the front single coil, both coils, or the rear single coil, plus it had a switch to switch from series to parallel operation of both coils, which was effective when both coils were active. And of course, there was a single volume and a tone control. The Lead 2, on the other hand, had two angled single coil pickups called X1s, and a three-way switch with which the two coils of the pickup could be switched individually or together. In addition to the three-way switch, the Lead 2 had a phase reversal switch. The two additional switches each produced a slightly thinner, higher-pitched sound. The Fender Lead 3 was offered in 1981 and 1982. This guitar was Fender's attempt to produce a guitar with the best of both Gibson and Fender features. Primarily, it was fitted with two Seth Lover designed coil tappable pickups. The switching allowed seven distinctive tones, from the renowned Fender single coil sound to a fat humbucking sound with incredible sustain. Interestingly, at the same time, Gibson was trying to be innovative as well and came up with a new design resulting in the creation of the Gibson Victory VM2 and the VMX guitar series. The Lee 3 guitar had a three position pickup selector switch and a three position coil selector switch that allowed for neck single coil, both coils neck and bridge in full humbucker mode, or bridge single coil. Of course, it also had a single volume and tone control. Cherry Sunburst and Sienna Sunburst were added to the color selections while burgundy was dropped from the options list. Fender had designed a lead bass guitar as well that apparently never went into production. Here's a photo of a prototype of that bass guitar. The bass guitar was designed to have two single coil bass pickups, each with eight poles, that slanted in the opposite direction of the lead two guitar. Like its lead brethren, it too was designed to have a three position pickup selector switch and a two position phase switch that acted when both pickups were engaged. The Fender Lead Series was in production until 1982. By 1981, Fender had already begun implementing the Bullet Series that would replace the Lead Series. Initially, Fender recruited Steve Morris to promote the Lead 2 and Lead 3 Series by having him sport them on stage. In 1979, Morris was playing guitar with the Dixie Dregs and later with Deep Purple. Slow hand himself, Eric Clapton played a Fender Lead 2 and later donated it to the London Hard Rock Cafe. Other notable celebrities or professional guitarists who played the Lead series was Richie Blackmore of Deep Purple, singer-songwriter Moon Martin, Elliot Easton of The Cars, and Bono from U2. 
As for the Fender Company, in 1985, in a campaign initiated by then CBS Musical Instruments Division President William Schultz, the Fender employees purchased the company from CBS and renamed it Fender Musical Instruments Corporation, or FMIC, and they have been rocking it ever since. In January 2020, Fender surprised everyone with a new reissued edition of the Lead 2 and Lead 3. As part of the medium-priced player series made in Mexico, the two models were offered again in a slightly modernized form after 40 plus years. But in our opinion, nothing beats the original. And before we leave out today, we'd like to leave you with the sound of our 1981 American-made Fender Lead 3. So we're going to break open the case and noodle around a little bit so you can hear this great vintage guitar. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen, and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history.